Hello everyone, it's Infinity Gamer here and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about sectorials, compositions, how to create them, fire teams, stuff like that. I'm going to be talking in generic terms so that you can understand where you go to try and understand how your faction builds sectorials and general rules around fire teams. So while I'm going to be drawing on faction specific examples to help demonstrate, this is a general overview on what sectorials are, how to build fire teams, the benefits you get from them. It's basically my first guide to sectorials if you're starting to look at them with a bit of interest but you want to know a little bit more about them. Where do we start? A sectorial is a sub-faction of a faction in a way. You've probably seen them when you've gone into the army builder for N4. That's a key thing to remember, you cannot get them in Code 1, so if you're watching this and you've only played Code 1, sectorials are not available there, they're only available in N4. A sectorial can be seen when you go into the faction on the army builder like this. The very top option in the army builder is the vanilla version of that faction where you don't get sectorial options, you don't get fire team bonuses or anything like that, but you get a greater variety of units. When you dive down into the sectorials below, you lose some of those unit options, but you gain fire teams and link team bonuses and stuff like that. So there's definitely a trade-off if you're going to be looking at sectorials versus vanilla. Neither is really better than the other. It depends on your playstyle and it depends on your meta and things like that. Both are very playable. You will see vanilla faction lists and sectorial faction lists at tournaments and they will both do very well. So don't go to sectorials if you think that they're the only way to win Infinity and play the game. Go to them because you want to try them and you want something a bit different and you think they might suit your playstyle. So here we go, we've got the list of, fac uh, of sectorials for each faction as you go through the army builder. But where do you go to actually see sectorial compositions? Obviously when you go into the army builder and you select the option for that sectorial, you can see the units available. But you get no information really as to limitations of composition. You can see the types of uh, fire teams that they can join, but that's about it. So where do we go for more information? Well, this video, hopefully. Sectorials have fire team bonuses. If you're unfamiliar with fire teams, they grant bonuses based on how large they are. So a single unit fire team doesn't exist because that's just one unit. A two person fire team is a duo. And the benefit that you get there is that by spending a single order on either one of the units that are in the duo, you can move both of those units, or you can you can activate both of those units and do the actions for both of those units. A prime example being, if you have these two units as a duo and you activate them in your first short skill move, they would both move up. And then if in a second short skill you want to do an action, we start to run into the first lesson of fire teams. When you are activating a fire team, no matter what its size is, you have to pick a link team leader, which is the leader of your fire team link team group. That leader will be the only one that can do a proper second short skill. So for example, uh, in, the, in the example I'm running with, you've got the duo moving up. This one has been nominated the link team leader. With the first short skill, you decide to move. Now both of those units get to move, but when it comes to you doing your second short skill, if it's not a move, then or a dodge, then only the link team leader will get to do that. Sorry, I was really quickly trying to think of any others where both units would be able to do that, but I'm pretty sure it's just move and just dodge. Look in the comments below because someone would have jumped in and corrected me if I am incorrect with this, so please feel free to check that out um, for correction. However, in most cases what you're going to be doing is moving and shooting or moving and attacking or moving and completing an objective. In all of those instances, or all of the most common instances, you will only be having the link team leader do the thing. So in the duo, both move up and then only the link team leader gets to shoot. So how do you decide when a link team leader is chosen and is that then set for the rest of the game? Well, no. You get to decide as soon as you activate that fire team or that link team, who the link team leader is. So you'll activate the link, choose the link team leader and then do the stuff. And um, if at the end you want, you. You do want to be wary of where your link team leader is because of something I'm going to teach you later. But for right now, that's all you need to know about link teams. So that's a duo. is a two-unit link team. A three-person link is called a Harris. Gets a cool name. Uh, the benefit that you get there is plus one burst on all of your shooting. Now that's great. 
Now remembering in your active turn, only the link team leader will really get the benefit because that's the only one that can shoot. But that also applies in ARO. So in ARO, all members of the link team would get plus one burst. You might be wondering where I'm getting these rules from. Now, that's a great question, because the sectorial rules do not exist in the main N4 rulebook. They exist as their own annex, which I've linked to in the description below. That includes all of the rules that you would need about how you form sectorials or fire teams, the benefits that you get for different sized fire teams or link teams. As I've said, the three member team, the Harris, gets a plus one burst, plus all of the benefits of duo. So you activate the Harris fire team. You can move all three units up with one of those designated as the link team leader or the fire team leader. And then the plus one burst will be used on the leader. Fantastic, there. When you get to a four member fire team bonus, the bonuses themselves are obviously combined with the two and the three. But in this case, you gain the sixth spent. <laughs> the sixth sense special skill. That was a lot of S's for me to try and handle at once, which I've just popped there for you to read over. Can be quite useful uh, when it comes to reacting to things uh, more so. Very good, obviously, against stealth. Uh, but yeah, that is the benefit that you would get for a four member fire team bonus. The five member fire team bonus is one of the ones that most players really like because that gives you a plus three modifier to ballistic skill attacks now remembering that that includes you know, shooting, things like a discover roll, uh, and also plus three to whip mods to discover rolls. Sorry, I reiterated something that didn't need to be reiterated there. So plus three mods to ballistic skill attacks, including throwing weapons, and plus three whip to discover rolls. And obviously you get all of the ones from, all of the benefits from the fire team compositions below that. So at a five person fire team, you're getting to move five units with a single order, you're getting that plus one burst, which you know you get from Harris upwards. And then you get the sixth sense special skill from being bigger than four. And then you also get the plus three. So a five man link or five unit link is actually pretty powerful. And that's why a lot of people gravitate towards sectorials is to unlock those bonuses. I've spoken a little bit about the bonuses. What about the downsides, the main structural deficits of a sectorial fire team? One of them is the composition. You are limited to which units can go into some of these groups, and I'll go into that with an example in a little bit. Obviously, in your active turn, while you're activating all five, you are only shooting and doing stuff with one, which can be great so long as you can compose that fire team well enough so that that's what you're doing and it's doing it well. Very prone to template weapons, and the reason for that is that all members of a fire team must stay within cohesion of each other at the beginning and the end of activation. There is a stage in the rules themselves where it explains that you have to check for uh, file team cohesion. What that means is whoever is the link team leader, all members of the fire team must be within eight of the link team leader. So the temptation can be to have one of your members on the edge and then all of the others safely scored away behind a building, then make that the leader. The thing that you've got to remember is everyone has to be within eight when you Note, when you choose that person as the leader, then when you activate, anyone that isn't within eight, when you do choose the link team leader or activate that, breaks from the fire team. Now, it's obviously as soon as they break from the fire team, you not only have your numbers reduced, uh, but that might also cause a problem with composition, which I will show you in a second. You can do, you can break fire teams intentionally if that was always your plan. You know, you may have a couple of units in a five per unit core to run up the building and then when uh, run up the map, not the building, uh, and then disperse once, you know, for order conservation. So there's a couple of strategies where you can work that, but it's worth bearing in mind because it's an easy thing to forget if you're coming straight from vanilla where it doesn't matter really how far units are from each other. The other thing to remember is that if your link team leader dies, the link is fully broken. And in order to reform a link, you have to spend a command token to do so. That's obviously not a problem and you can do that a few times, but you don't want to be burning through your command tokens to reform links that didn't have to because of misplaced units or anything like that. So as you can probably imagine, you're charging your fire team up, your link team leader is at the front because that's the one that's going to be doing the shooting, the pressing buttons, the CC attack. It faces an ARO, you lose that unit and your entire fire team has broken. 
at either the beginning of your, or when you're next able to, you would spend a command token and reform those so long as the composition allows it. I mentioned composition a lot and I haven't explained that to you because that's actually quite a complicated bit of sectorials and I want to make sure you understand the basics of how they function beforehand. Other things in terms of sectorials and fire teams, they are quite good. They can be a bit of a crutch for some players, especially defensively because of plus one burst and ARO and all the bonuses to that. So definitely, if I was talking to a new player, I would definitely recommend coming up through code one, playing vanilla, then when you come to N4, play vanilla first, understand your units, understand some of the niggly things, face some sectorial and fire teams first, and then maybe start to dip your toe in the water. I apologize for my pile of shame here. I've just uh, assembled the Crimson Stone set and I have my military orders that is being painted just in the foreground there, which is my second sectorial after Starmada. In terms of fire team things that you should know, most of it is covered in the annex that I will link to. The other piece of documentation that you're going to need if you are going to dabble into sectorials and discover their composition for your faction are the sectorial charts. I've got a couple up on the screen here. You download them from Corvus Belly, and again, I will link to them so that you can find them fairly easily. There's a whole bunch of them. The ones that I've brought up here are the Corregidor ones for Nomads for Crimson Stone. And the reason for that is because Crimson Stone is obviously a hot topic right now. So people might be getting into Crimson Stone, then they might be stepping into M4 and thinking about Sectorial. So I thought I'd focus this video on that, but what I'm about to say is going to apply regardless of your faction because the charts are the same in terms of what they show you and what they tell you. So you will be able to take everything you need from here and apply them to your own faction. What are these Sectorial charts? They tell you the limitations that you will have in your Sectorial, depending on which one it is. So as I said, this one is the Corregidor Sectorial from Nomads. What you're seeing on this slide is a breakdown of things like the AVA and the fire teams that units can go in. What you might notice if you're really eagle-eyed is that this is not the full list of Nomad units. As I said, Sectorials have a slightly smaller or different composition of units than Vanilla. In most cases, Vanilla has every unit available for that faction. When you get down to sectorials, there are cherry picks as to which units make up that sectorial, and it, that will play to the style that the sectorial likes to play to. So some are going to be uh, more heavy infantry focus, like military orders for Pano, Panoceania, for example. Others might be more hacking, like infantry, camo, it depends. So each sectorial is a flavor in its own right, and the units within that help steer you towards that flavor. The AVA, so the availability of the units, also changes in sectorials from what you're used to in vanilla. You may notice, in many cases, that something that you maybe saw in vanilla and really liked might have a lower AVA in a sectorial because it's more specialist and it's encouraging you to play with more elite troops in a different way. But you might also notice that some units get a bigger AVA so that they can become more of a core element of that sectorial than they maybe they were in vanilla. So definitely familiarize yourself with this. Now, into, this is mostly in the army builder. So the only bit that is really interesting here is the fire team options. You can see in that column that you've got options for the types of fighting they are. Core is a five person fire team. Harris, as I've explained, is a three. Uh, four doesn't get its own name, which is sad, and I think Corvus Belli should give four a name that is applied across all of them. And then Duo is the two unit one. What you can see here is that some units can, you know, the Gecko squad that I've highlighted here, they can go into a Duo fire team only. Uh, and then you may notice that we've got a couple of units that can go into multiple types of fire teams. So the Evaders, for example, can go into a core, a Harris, and a special. What's a special, I hear you asking? Well, I'm about to go into that in a second, so be patient. You can notice that several can't go into any fire teams at all. So just because you're dealing with sectorial doesn't sectorials doesn't mean that everything can immediately become a fire team. There are still limitations as to what can go in them and what cannot. So don't uh, imagine that everything can now suddenly go into a five-man link. It's not going or five-man fire team. It's just simply not going to be possible. So how do you? discover these cores and the specials and the weird things. There's actually also a fourth type? I don't know how to explain it. Wild cards is something that we're going to look at in a second uh, because that becomes a f another element. I'm trying to think of a number because I'm like, how many elements have I gone through? But wild cards are exactly that. They're kind of wild cards. Some units are able to join 
any set, any fire team. Uh, they can maybe have limitations. So I'm, that's partly what I'm going to cover now. This chart shows the special fire team. So in that previous chart, if it said special on it, this is explaining what is special and what the limitations are for those units. A prime example is right at the very top here, Mobile Brigada. Special fire team, it's a wildcard trooper. Mobile Brigadas can be part of any fire team in this sectorial army. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to break away from some of the other specials to tell you why that's cool so that you can then see why I get excited about some of the others. If we go back to, let's say, a core of wildcats, you know, you're looking at four wildcats and then you've got something like the Mobile Brigada, which can join any fire team in the sector. Your fifth unit in that uh, fire team could be a Mobile Brigada supporting the wildcats, taking it up to five. Going to talk to you a little bit about some issues with that in a second. So yeah, Mobile Brigada can join any part, any fire, any fire team in this sectorial army. Evaders, you can see there, special. We've got a couple of specials here. The Sputnik, oh, that's cool, because that is a Sputnik. Uh, I like, and the Vostok Sputnik. Now, the Wildcard Trooper, you can see here that when you open Army Builder, you'll see that under Vostok Sputniks for Corregidor, there's a couple that have different names. And one of the names that it has, as I'm showing you here, Vostok's FTO, only the FTO can be a wildcard in any of the fire teams. Uh, so the Vostok Sputnik FTO only can go into a, it can be a wildcard. You can't use any of the non-FTO Vostok Sputniks as a member of a fire team here. There you go, so you can see a few here. Most of these are actually pretty cool because they're fairly wildcard-ish, so they can join any. With other sectorials, you will notice that there are severe limitations on a few of them. For example, it'll be uh, Hector in Starmada can only join a fire team of Beta Troopers and Nyoka. And it doesn't matter kind of like how big those are, it can only join fire teams of those. And then you look at Beta Troopers and they can only be a Harris, so Hector can only join a Harris of Beta Troopers. Uh, Nyokas could be a core, so Hector could join a core. This is one of the little issues that some people have with sectorials. Well, how what defines whether this is a core of, you know, uh, let me go back to the Corregidor list. What defines whether this is a Harris of Wildcats or a Harris of or a core of this and what's a, you do in a way, so long as your fire team has one unit that is that model that makes up a core it is a core of that unit. So in this example here, if I have one wildcat and then I have four wild cards, that's a core five of wildcats. <laughs> there are rumors of Corpus Belly maybe switching up fire team rules in the future so that you get rewarded if your core is of the five things that it's supposed to be a core of, uh, but that's not likely to come anytime soon. So just hold your breath and check out for it later. But right now, Yes, you can have one wildcat in a five unit core and the rest made up of wildcats. The issue you will find in doing that is if that wildcat dies during the battle, you cannot reform the link. Because the one thing that made that a valid link, a fire team, has gone. And in most cases, yes, wildcards are very good at joining other fire teams, but they can't make a fire team of themselves really. So you've got to bear that in mind if you're going to go down that rabbit hole of a super slim down core or Harris of one unit of the thing that makes it and then stuff it with wild cards. Just don't let that thing die. But also in the back of your mind, think, okay, if you've got a couple of fire teams running around the table, could, if one falls and you've got a couple of wild cards floating around the place, how difficult would it be for you to get them over to another one and reform that into a into a core if it's valid? This is why sometimes I struggle with sectorials, is not because they're massively complicated to form and you know put a list out there that features them, but because there's so many variables as to how they could work amazingly on the table or crumble. It's kind of like a house of cards, in that it's nowhere near a house of cards because when a, fire, when a fire team works really well, it can be devastating and it can be amazing to watch. However, if one thing goes wrong, it can crumble and your entire strategy could fall apart. So you've got to be relatively mindful of that. I like Corregidor when I've started to look at it as a sectorial because it's a little bit, I think, more forgiving 
in terms of its composition and how many things could float between fire teams, then maybe something like Starmada as a sectorial or even something like military orders where your model count is fairly low as it is. Corregidor is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to giving it a go. Those are some of the key things. and I'm going to do a brief recap right now on some of the core things I've covered and then maybe do a little bit of waffling, but probably not. The main thing is there are four assets, four assets you need to really start looking at sectorial seriously. You need the army builder, you need the annex rules, which are separate to the core rules for M4, and then you'll need two sheets from the sectorial charts. One of them will be the uh, special compositions, and then the other one will be just the standard sectorial chart, which is fundamentally what you see in the army builder, so you could kind of get away with out using it if you wanted, but it's actually just quite nice and good to look at if you're looking at it for a first time. Next thing, you get bonuses for the number of units in the fire team. That's in the annex rule book and is pretty much from two to five worth doing. Most people hunt for five, but it gets quite expensive. So Harris can actually be a bit of a sweet spot in terms of like a heavy hitting, very effective thing. Uh, remember that you've, you, your link team gets assigned when you activate the fire team and everything has to be within eight of that leader, otherwise it drops out and you lose it and it's no longer part of the fire team. You can reform a fire team by spending a command token, uh, so long as it's eligible. You discover the eligibility of sectorials and fire teams on the chart that kind of shows which, sec uh, which fire teams can be composed of, and then you can look at the specials for things like wild cards that can join. Sectorials can be incredibly fun and are definitely part of Infinity that I would implore anyone playing to try at some stage because they're pretty cool it's not as bad as if you've come from 40k and you're looking at infinity it's not as bad as detachments and stuff like that where you know you can only unlock certain abilities if you're using x y and z and you lose points they're just fun like it is a list and it is kind of like a focus list where you get pushed into various units various fighting styles but you unlock some benefits for the sacrifices you make for losing some art for some units uh, some factions definitely kind of feel very different when you go from vanilla to a sectorial and for me that's o12 vanilla plays very differently to going into starmada which is the only sectorial that o12 has at the moment uh, definitely give it a go if you get confused by the rules don't worry that's very normal but just throw some units on the table have a go probably against a more experienced player who has used sectorials before so that they can tell you what you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong but jump in the comments, uh, let me know if I've forgotten anything major around sectorials. It is a big subject to cover, so this is very much like a brief overview of everything. And then there's likely to be more focused videos in the future, maybe. Who knows? Um, then, and jump in the comments if you have anything that you want a new player to learn as well, because they might actually scan the comments and your piece of information might be useful for them. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I always really do appreciate every single view, every single like, and every single comment. It means the absolute world to me and keeps me doing these sorts of things. So thank you so much to those that do. And I'll be back soon with another video. So stay tuned.